Well, the struggles continue for the White Sox. They get shut out for the fifth time this season. They get only two hits. Garrett Crochet, a career-high 10 strikeouts, but the Reds score five runs on four hits. Sox lose 5-0. They are now 2-12 on the season. It is White Sox Post Game Live here with the legend Ozzie Guillen. I'm Chuck Garfine. Uh, we are two weeks into the season. This is the worst offense I've seen in my life. Whoa. This is the worst offense I've seen in my life. I hope they can get better. But two weeks into the season, this is the worst offense I've ever well, seen on the funny. White Sox uh, on the south side of my life. Funny because five shot out in 12 games, that's a lot. Yeah. One run or less in eight of the 12 games. That's, whew, I don't know. It's, it's, first of all, well, no big hits. They're not, cl- they're not clutch. Early in the season, they're not clutch the big hits. Yeah. They lost a couple games by one run. Nowadays, wow, you strike out 14 times today yeah. in two walks. With the teams, a bunch of kids. But who, who are the kids, the Reds or no, the White Sox? No, 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 kids. Kids is like years in the big league, not superstars. Yeah, the White Sox aren't, don't have kids. Oh, they do. They do. They have like two years old, three years old. Yeah, they have kids. Okay. But uh, it's just kind of like you better put the ball in place, make things happen. When you strike out, nothing could happen. Swinging a good pitch, they don't. Mm-hmm. I watched the game completely today, detail by detail, to see what was wrong, what was right, what they do. Don't. They just go and swing. By the way, we had a player, he swing the bat and he got a hit by pitch. Lenin Sosa. Yes. Okay, I talked to Tony La Russa yesterday. Mm-hmm. He's very high in Zosa. Mm-hmm. And I asked Tony, listen, do not go to ask Tony what, you know, I mean, it's Hall of Famer. Yeah. He love it. But he, last, the first few games, he do what he's supposed to do. Now he come back to what the same Lenin Sosa we saw last year. Too many strike out, yeah. try to pull the ball, he ain't going to work. Yeah. Well, we're going to see that play you were talking about. Uh, Glenn, Alejandro, we call him here. Alejandro, my boy, uh, my man. So I'm known as, like, Salty Chuck. By, by get, the way, what? that's an Alejandro, the only Alejandro I love. My grandpa name was Alejandro. Yes. And I, I'm glad he died. <laughs> because? I hate him. Wow. And that's now, why, so, but now you call Glenn Alejandro? No, I love it. He know my love. Okay, he know I seriously. love it. But I have to, He's I operating know, the camera, hey, by, by the way. By the way, I don't remember people's names. You know that. I know. Then I go, BJ out there. BJ, because BJ Armstrong. And I got, I got my man Alejandro there. His real name's Glenn. By the way, Glenn, he should be sitting here when they talk about football. Guys. Yes, he should be. When they talk about the Bears, he should be here, right here. <laughs> Right here. Yes, he that man is amazing <laughs> yeah, in football. So, so here's what he said to me. He gave us gave me a line here. There, there he was. I'm, you know, salty <laughs> Chuck. I'm not salty at all. I'm not salty, but you know what I am? And he he said this to me. I'm like, you know what? That's what I am. I'm grumpy. I'm grumpy. Chuck. Grumpy to like the, the, the little the little guys at the. Well, yeah, like the the, the little uh, the seven dwarfs. Yeah, I'm I'm grumpy. I'm not. I'm just not happy about this team and about Me either where this thing where this thing is right now and where it seems to be going. I mean, what are we talking about here? Where is this season going? The way that it has started out, we are waiting for improvements. The season is very long. There are many many games and teams go through this. Believe it or not, maybe not to this degree, but we are waiting for glimmers of hope. And we started seeing it in Cleveland, and then after one win, eh, there's your hope. T- painful loss. They come home, and this has happened for two games. It's a funny because it's one thing about when you fail. Mm-hmm. I use baseball to fail, especially when you're hitting. But well, it's not a chance when you make L- Lodolo. Lodolo. And uh, who beats uh, uh, Andrew? Abbott. Andrew Abbott. Look like you face Randy Johnson. Uh, well, and, and Sandy Kufak, with my respect, guys, I don't know you. With my respect, yeah. you guys pitched they very well. Amazing. Very well, yes. You can, they pitched very well against the White Sox. Yeah. Cincinnati Reds, I was watching uh, see this, uh, where they was. Yeah. Uh, what place? Okay, Cubs, Pittsburgh, Milwaukee, St. Louis. Be careful with that team. Yeah, be they careful. Really good. Well, you know, I'll, I'll just, just, just face the White Sox. Yes, they are facing the White Sox. I like what I see about this ball. You know what I'd say about that team? And this is what I look for in April and May. Do they have it? Do they have a thing? They've got something over there. Now, it had to be the manager. The Royals Bells. have 
something. Yeah, they did sweep the White Sox in four games. <laughs> so, I mean, the White Sox are not playing well. But when you start getting a thing happening in April, right, that can grow and you start believing in yourself. Uh, that would have sound funny. What Pedro can do about this? Mm. Nothing. Nothing. No, there was one thing he could have done today, and we were, we're going to show it. Okay, please. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, I will yeah, say yeah. that. There is something well, he could have done Before today. we go there, yeah, yeah, because yeah. it would be the opposite of what I'm saying. Yes, yes. You need nothing done. Please, guys, take a proud of you at bat. Mm-hmm. I know teams go out there every day, talk to Marcus you guys. Tim is Michael Tim, the, the, the hitting coach. Yeah. Talk to you guys about it. Prepare you guys about it. I know for a fact. I know this man very well. Get you out there. Then you go to the plate and you just really forget everything I know for a fact they talk about before the game. So they're not following the plan. I, I don't know. They had their own plan, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, me, Billy, I say, okay, let him pitch, let him all the song, free swinger, early swing, early swing, early swing, early swing. I, yeah, I can't, I can't and, believe that hasn't been the plan the whole season. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah. Chuck, and it, to me, to say early swing, it takes a lot of guts because I was lead the league in early swing in the history of the game. <laughs> okay. Here's the field coverage pitcher and cap brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. So, Garrett Crochet, five runs, four and two-thirds. He had ten strikeouts. That's a career high. But Nick Lodolo, a se- his season debut, only gives up one hit. He had a no-hitter going for a while. In five and two-thirds, he also had ten strikeouts. The Sox could barely touch him. I tell you what, that slider was devastating. Yeah. Yes, it was. But one thing about it, I know they have... They have a video, they have stuff that say the slider is not a strike. Look it, it's not a strike. It's yeah. great slider. Oh my god. That's the Look at that. I, <laughs> I didn't know me. I, I, I'm gonna talk about Dave Steve slider. I don't know if you guys know who Dave, Dave Steve was. Dave Steve, yes, he was great against the White Sox. Yeah, Dave Steve slider because that ball disappeared yes. at the play. Yes. That was a great pitch right there. Yes, but uh, in, in the meanwhile zone. I say, well, you know, throw one slider for a strike. Yeah. You see the strikeout slider? Now, we chase him by pitches, by pitches, by pitches, and we make, you know what? I'll take him. I will tell him. My my guess is if I'm the Reds, I'm thinking, okay, I'm facing this team, the free-swinging team that is going to swing at pitches out of the zone. Nick, just throw it and see if they'll swing at it. Oh, they are continuing to swing at this pitch. Let's do it. Here we go again. By the way, we say that in the pregame show. Yeah. We say that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not going to take anything away from uh, Andrew. The, the Abbott. Lefty, Abbott, the pitch last yesterday. time. Yesterday. Yesterday. I'm not going to take any away from him, but I say, oh, you going to swing this? you going to swing that? Mm-hmm. And the pregame show also say, I talked to Freddy Garcia, I talked to guys, Mark Burley. They told me, well, if they are swinging ball club, I'm going to do it. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Make them chase. Uh, uh, or see if they'll chase. I yes, you, you, you chase it. That's what I'm going to fix you. That's... that's uh, El Duque. El Duque strike out people yeah. uh, in the bottom. You remember yeah, that series yeah, bottom? Well, he said, you know what? Everyone will be a hero. They want to change my pitches because they want to eat it. And then what I did, I just continue to feed them, them what they want to see, yeah. but they not catch up. That's right. So Gavin Sheets, we're talking about him on the pregame show. Against lefties in his career, he's only batting 125. This year against lefties, 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Well, Pedro put him in the lineup here today against a lefty. You know, credit to Sheets, but more credit to the Reds because they stole two hits away from him because of their great outfield defense. That's a double. That is a double. That's a double. You see speed kill? When I talk about a speed, I'm not talking about run the bases. I'm talking about outfield speed. Yeah. Look at that. Great positioning. Look at that. Yeah, great you defense. read that right away. And you talk about defense? That's a defense, at least for last two days. Yes. I don't follow the, the Cincinnati Reds. But what I see for the last two days, wow, they play great defense. They can run the bases. They yes. got power. They got a lot of good things. They got going good for them. balance on that team. I wasn't sure. I'm still not sure about their pitching, but the pitching certainly was good against the White Sox. Sox should have had a hit in the second inning. And we like to focus on the little things because they are so big. And here's the thing that how did this even happen? Zach Remillard trying to get on base. Props to him. He's like, okay, I got some room here. I'm going to lay down a bunt. He's got speed. But Ozzy, what happens here? He didn't touch the base. <laughs> you know why they call that? What? Desperate. Desperate? What uh, do you oh, mean? Oh, oh, the ball no bounds their way. Oh, I mean, Look at that. Come on. You know, I can't get him out of that. I was... You think uh, that's that, funny? That, yes. 
very funny. That's not funny. I'm not laughing. I, 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 you better laugh because what are you going to do? You know what? He take one hit His away from him. looks great, by the way. But he looked like uh, Gordon Beckham. Gordon Beckham. Hey, okay, bacon. <laughs> Back there. But I, 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 what I can say about that, I just laugh. Because well, when things are not going your way, I mean, you're not. Hey, I mean, they can't even. They can't get to first base, the and ball, when they get to first base, they can't touch first base. <laughs> the balls no bounce no. the way they should, they want to be bounced. That no. is. So this will give you an example of where things are at right now with the White Sox offensively. The rankings um, don't kick your television set in. They when don't. You see this. Don't show it then. What's that? Don't show it. Don't you know? Well, we want, <laughs> we're here to inform and entertain you. We'd rather be entertaining you in this situation more than informing you. But, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. They're last in the majors in runs, batting average, and team on base percentage. Uh, what is not included here is home runs. They're last in home runs. They have eight. In the last seven games, they've got one homer. They've gone deep once in seven games. That was Gavin Sheets. This is where things are at. So when I go back to, like, this is the worst offense I've ever seen with the White Sox, it is. I mean, I, I, I was not alive in 1968. Actually, Bill Melton, <laughs> Bill Melton called they, us today. He was there? Bill, because things were, things were so bad in 68, they called up Bill to help change things, I think, in 69 or 70. He was a part of the new wave, and he was going to be, like, the leader of that new offense, and it did actually work out. But, boy, this... That's your first year of broadcasting? That's 1968. Yeah. I was not born in 1968. Oh, okay, I did. Yes, yes. I, yes. I, I was four years old. Yeah. 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 That's Bill, how, I mean, that's the last time the a, White Sox a, had a, an a, offense to start the season this bad. Hey, Bill, your kids is 45 years old in Venezuela. <laughs> Can you please send some money to them? <laughs> uh, was he in Venezuela? Oh, yeah. The king of Venezuela. By the way. Did you see how good-looking that man was? Oh, yeah. Yes, he was. He was a matinee idol. He was a Hollywood movie star. Okay, that man. On a baseball field. American player. Yeah. That good-looking. Go to Venezuela. Yeah. Ah, what do you think <laughs> they do? It's awful for He's going he's gonna to go back to his room and go to sleep. Yes. Back in the 70s, 80s? Yeah. It's... Ooh. I no, want to see the Bill Melton No, movie. no. Hey, by the way, no cell phone, no media. No, oh, my God. <laughs> Beautiful day, Bill Melton. I love you, buddy. All right. Well, let's get to Garrett Crochet, who struck out the side in the first inning. This was Nintendo stuff in that first frame against the Reds. And you're thinking this could be a special day for him. Well, it was a special day when you consider he had 10 strikeouts. But uh, the Reds made some, I don't know if they called it adjustments, because they still struck out 10 times. But how good was this stuff in the first inning? It's always good, man. Yeah. I think today we're going to talk about lady. I think I believe so. Uh, we're going to make one pitch and take everything away from him. Yeah, we'll get I mean, to it. This kid, I love him. I love him. I just say, why they let him pitch 90 pitches when no have to? Yeah, he was down 5 nothing. I'm not the manager. I just, in my opinion, I say, wow, 5 nothing game, when you let that pitch, maybe you want to. Maybe you feel comfortable. Well, I'm yeah. sure he wanted to. And I, and I like, I say early, don't let him dictate what to do because he will be in the mound for 130 pitches. But I like what... To this guy say before the game. All right, second inning, a whole different story here. So Crochet gives up this two-run single, but watch this at third base. That's an out. That should be the second out of the game, but Lenin Sosa drops the ball. So these are little things, but this is going to come back to bite them, right? He's got to be able to make this to one hop. I don't know what that, what happened. It was a one hopper, maybe? He got, no, he was a right now. He was, I think he tried to throw the ball before that. I'd like to see this so, pitch once oh, again. So they, this should have been, could have been strike three? Yes. Yeah, so that would have ended the inning. Instead, the inning continues, and this happens. Three runs score. So the, the Sox could have had basically two chances to get out of this inning, only down 2 nothing. Instead, it's 5 nothing. And look, at that run scored on that because Paul DeYoung. No, by the, the way, you know, but that's when you have a good base running, when you had a speed on the base. But that pitch, it was too close. Okay, one of the best pitch in the big league, throwing. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. He only walked one guy, period, before yes. that start. Yes. And the umpire had to be ready about, okay, I've got to be behind the plate. This guy is one of the best. And, 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 and the ball was too close mm -hmm. to take. Yeah. I'm not going to blame the umpire. I yeah. don't. Okay? But that pitch changed the game. Even the White Sox don't score when this guy throw one pitch right down with base loaded yeah. over there. And you're taking it? Wait a minute. That's why shot. Get yeah. out of there. 
sorry, Indian got a great eyes because he right, walked right, full time. Right, yes. Right. But in the meanwhile, I, I'm not to give that to the umpires. Nope. Uh, by the way, can we talk about this? Why? Nobody had anything to say. Yeah. Anything. That's a, that, was a, that was the pitch of the game. To me, it was. To me. Maybe for somebody else. Don't. Okay, I watched the game very careful. That pitch, it was. And nobody from the White Sox dugout had any reaction. Well, they might have had a reaction that we didn't see or hear, but no one came on the field well, it's to not, disagree. Well, that got a, they, I, I, that's the last, maybe the last they are managing. In, in, they might suspend me. That's fine. It's everybody had different attitude, different way to treat the game. The moment. The yeah. moment. To me, I say, Hulk Harris will say, sometimes you got to go out just to come out yeah. and just air people out just to see the team reaction. That would have been a good time for somebody. To me. Yeah. Believe me, I got people down there in the sides, not in the clubhouse, in the sides. Look at nobody react, do anything about that pitch. And that pitch changed the game. I go now, and I go be the biggest argument I can get. Mm -hmm. I can get why my team is not playing well. I got to show my team I'm protecting you. Yeah. I'm with you guys. And I got my best guys out of, in the mouth. Bro, I will take that own part and kill it. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. My wife's going to be mad at me. That's it. That's why you don't have a job. No. You got to show people who is you really care. Yeah. If you have passion. If yeah. you have yeah. God. You needed that strike I, I, listen, call because that was listen, a strike. Listen, I'm not talking about Pedro, okay? Please, I don't talk about Pedro. Pedro, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking people react different way. That's the way well, I Pedro's think been react. Pedro's been thrown out of games before. Five. Yeah. It's been five times? Five times, maybe. Okay, this is a time you tend to change around to show people, I care, guys. Yeah, yeah. I'm behind you guys. If my best boy out there, I want to fight for you. Yeah, I mean, and there's two different things to argue. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. He, it's AJ Persiki, argument striking balls. I'm like, oh, okay, there you go. Okay, that's fine. If Jermaine Dye, Paul Conerco, turn around to see the umpire, I'm out. Yeah. Because they are staying. Because the I know types, yeah. they're not going to play around with it. I know they're not yeah. complaining about anything. That's the time you can have it. I'm not going to tell people, I'm not going to tell Pedro how to manage it, how to change yourself, how to do stuff. I don't. Please don't misunderstand what I say. But this is what's the opportunity to go out and say, you know what? I have passion. I care about this ball club. I care about my team. And you start cursing them out. And like, two days of Pedro, good. They play when, when I'm matching. I'm, they play bad, but well, hopefully they play better without me. Boof. Yeah. And I, it, I take that release out. Yeah. Fans are going to be behind me. Mm -hmm. The general match is going to be behind me. I see Guy and Chuck fight after the game going to be behind me. Yes. It's a lot of people behind him. Yeah, yeah. Okay, once again, they turn the thing around. People have different ways to do stuff. And yeah. that one don't help him, the ball club. It was a big moment in the game, and unfortunately, it went the other way, and the Reds ended up scoring three additional runs. Let's hear from Garrett Crochet. He's speaking with the media. How did you feel your stuff played over? I felt like I was kind of searching for something the first two innings, um, just because my command wasn't there, but I chalked that up to more of just, just not being as competitive in the zone as I have been. I, I feel like I was focusing too much on hitting spots and not enough on throwing strikes, and I mean, with the three walks, you could tell that that came back to bite me. Is that what you had been doing up until this point? Just not focus, focus more on the grind. Yeah, yeah. Competing in the zone is that. That's my game. And uh, today, it took me far too long. And uh, I had already thrown too many pitches before I started to do that. The Indian at bat and three two pitches, pretty close as well as borderline pitches. Yeah. Just, uh, just kind of trying to get on back after that, uh, face and stare after that as well. Yeah, well, glad you said it. Uh, I mean, that was a pitch that I thought, I mean, changes the game. But, I mean, what can you do, you know? Did you feel you were like, you can't command lines for, for stretches there early on? Yeah, I, I, I was a little just like, in, not not really in between. It was like just too, too, too much on both sides. It was like I'd yank one, then I'd try to make the adjustment and leave it arm side. And, uh, you know, the cutter... The cutter wasn't getting me back online the way that it has the past couple games, um, and I just chalked that up to kind of like I said, just not not 
not a willingness to compete in the zone, you know, trying to be a little too fine. After that big, you know, 37 pitch inning, did you feel like it seemed like you found a bit of a rhythm, at least, like mixing it up to that? What, what do you feel like fell into place after? Um, for me, it was just, I mean, at that point, I was, what, like 50 pitches in through two, so it, it kind of became a little bit bigger than me. Like, I was I was trying to save the bullpen as much as I could. You know, I was hoping to get through five, but the pitch count climbed a little higher than we were comfortable with, so so that's what happened. But, I mean, it was a deep breath and reset. I mean, that was kind of when I realized, you know, I, I mean, would I have two or three walks in that inning? I think I had two in that inning. So that was kind of when I realized that I just needed to compete a little bit more in the zone. Um, but just, I mean, overall, looking at the day as a whole, it was like, I, I was never really able to even hone in on that. Like I say, I started doing it after the second, but really, did I? Not, not so much. Yeah, no added responsibility going into the game. You know, I'm just going to go in there and do me. But I mean, after a long inning like that, like it comes down to how do I get through five? And uh, you know, talking with some of the veteran starters that we've got. That's kind of the name of the game. Is is I mean, everyone's going to give up runs now and then, but but at the end of the day, it's it's your job as a starter to get through five or six. Congrats, you finished the video. If you want to build on that success, download the NBC Sports Chicago app. It's got highlights, exclusive insights, and push alerts tailored to you. Everything you need to be a real Chicago sports fan. Download it now.